Hello? For this video, I'm going to be eating some Cheetos. I figure it would go good with the subject I'm going to talk about today, which is um, selling out in the music industry. I like the jalapeno flavored Cheetos, not the big fan of the regular Cheetos. Uh, cheese puffs are good though. I like, I, like, I like cheese puffs. Maybe I should have bought some pork rinds and pork rinds instead. I, I really like pork rinds. I had some last night. Um, I went to the store across the street, got a bag of pork rinds, and put them alongside my um. Uh, four o'clock meal when I'm going to break at A&W. Anyway, now to read my script. Yeah, the jalapeno's got a nice little kick. Not too much, but you know, enough. Anyway, the concept of selling out is something that's been heavily debated by people the concept of selling out is something that's been heavily debated by many people who are involved with the music industry. Both by consumers and the people who work to produce content, content within the industry. God, I'm starting as stuttering today, I don't know why. Today I would like to talk about some music videos that have been accused of selling out. One of the most infamous sellout videos is Black Flag's Slip It In video which featured an advertisement for the band's tour and album at the end of the video. Like every other video they made, it was filmed on a very low budget. You can see also um, the video for TV Party and Family Man. Family Man in particular, that's... Oh my god, what a cheap, what a cheap video that was. This was also released during the period when Black Flag were being criticized for straying away from their punk roots towards a more experimental sound influenced by jazz, as well as during the period when Black Flag released their divisive, divisive, I think it's divisive, Family Man album and the strange video for the title track. Neil Young has always been accused of selling out by altering his sound based on what is popular at the time. And I think I heard he made some albums like in the 80s or something that were not well received. I heard that he altered his sound on those albums. I, I didn't look that up though. But I, I remember um, hearing that some of his albums during that period weren't very well received. I'm not I'm not a huge Neil Young fan, so I don't. I know his seventies work. Don't know much beyond that, but I've heard that he made like a bunch of albums that were something about them people just didn't like. Anyway, his song, Heart of Gold, was criticized for sounding too much like a Bob Dylan song at a time when Bob Dylan was fairly popular and was receiving media attention for his collaborations with George Harrison. Um, he was on a... I think he wrote a song for... He guest appeared on um, George Harrison's All Things Must Pass album. I think that was the album. I think this was. I think this was also during the time when, or around the time when Bob Dylan Reese released um, "Self Portrait." Self for Self Portrait. Oh my God! My first, the first song I heard from Self Portrait was um, Quinn the Eskimo, and I mean it's. It, it, it's not bad, but it's not great, and it might be the best song in the album, like, Self-Portrait was not a great album, especially from Bob Dylan. Ugh, I don't want to listen to that album again. 
Rust Never Sleeps was also criticized, though not nearly as heavily, for adopting a punk sound. There's a typo there, I'm going to fix that. And mentioning Johnny Rodden. When punk music was establishing itself as a music genre with commercial potential as opposed to the kind of really underground genre it was. Um, I, I, I don't think punks, like, not a lot of them, some of them got success in the 80s, but... Uh, seven, late 70s, Sex Pistols were become popular, but... I think punk was receiving a lot of media attention, but at the time, a lot of punk bands were being confused with new wave and um, post-punk. So I think those genres were getting popular, and actual punk music was kind of underground, with the exceptions like uh, Dead Candies. I think they got a lot of attention. Um, Fear was on Saturday Night Live. Uh, the Ramones, um, I've heard conflicting reports on that. Some people say they were really popular, some people say they weren't. Um, you know, what else? Uh, television, television had that hit with Mark A. Moon. Uh, I think that was more of a post-punk band, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 television was definitely a post-punk. Same with um, Richard Hell and the Voidoids. I think I, I think I think I said that right. Voidoids. Um, Richard Hell. I think their Blank Generation album is referenced in a My Little Pony ep My Little Pony episode at some point. That's not that, that that's not great advertisement for Richard Hell, is it? I can't I can't stick to a script today. I I, I just can't. Uh, anyway, Neil Young was criticized for adopting a punk song on sound on Rust Never Sleeps and mentioning Johnny Rotten when punk music was establishing itself as a music genre with commercial potential. His arguably worst offender, though, was when he filled a music video with numerous thinly veiled advertisements under the guise of Harry, that was initially rejected by MTV for its depiction of Michael Jackson's hair lighting on fire during an advertisement for Coca-Cola. Was it Coke? I wrote this from memory. Like, um, it might have been Pepsi that he had the had the hair lighting on fire for. Hang on, I'm gonna look it up right now. I'm uh, trying to make this uh, thing more spontaneous, you know? Yeah, it was Pepsi. It wasn't Coke. I'm going to have to change that. I don't think it's a coincidence that he recorded this song during a time when it was popular to call music musicians out for selling out with advertisements. I mean, people were doing that all through the 80s, and Neil Young did that later than everybody else did. Last video I want to talk about is Dire Straits' video for Money for Nothing. Chances are you've already got an opinion of the video. Dire Straits' video for Money for Nothing was conceived despite Mark's protests that the video would be simply a video of him and his band performing the song. He didn't want any of the innovative imaginative, you know, computer-generated stuff in there. Which I think, is, I personally think is stupid. I, I don't think that's a good stance to take at all. 
And I think that's not a great idea to decide that creating an interesting and innovative video wouldn't be a good idea for your career. And, I, and that's best to preserve your artistic integrity with a bland video featuring little more than your band performing a song. But what do I know? I'm not in the music industry. I just write songs and create music videos using questionably legal clips from other videos on YouTube and cartoons. <sighs> Okay, thanks for watching this video. Uh, don't think anybody will watch this. Not a lot of people watched my last one. I'm just doing them for fun right now. Bye.